everyone and welcome back to Fun with Fitzy. Today's video is Chapter 9, Video 2. And now we're going to be talking about valuing accounts receivable. Okay, so let's go through an example. Let's say Ahmed has a company and he has the following receivables. Brittany owes him 700 due in 10 days. Jan owes 500 due in 30 days. Gagandeep owes 350 and it's past due. When you see that means it was due and it was due 10 days ago. And Gurpal owes 200 that were past due 45 days. What is the total that should be reported on the balance sheet for accounts receivable? If you were to add up all of these receivables, you would get 17,050. Some would argue that that should be the amount of accounts receivable on the balance sheet. However, we know that we're not going to be able to collect all this money. So in actual fact, remember, we need to calculate our net realizable value really quickly here. Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's record the estimated uncollectible. So he estimates that he's not going to be able to collect 400,000 of that. So the adjustment and the year end of this year, because we need to match our expense with the revenue in the period in which we earn the revenue. So on December 31st of the year we made all those sales, we're going to have a bad debt expense of $400,000 and we're going to put it in our holding tank allowance for duffel accounts. Remember, allowance for duffel accounts is a contra asset. Now, as you recall, because we just talked about this, you can't just credit accounts receivable here. It won't work because you don't know who's not going to pay you. And of all of our customers up here, Brittany, Jan, Gagandeep, and Gurpal, we don't know which of them is going to pay. So we can't just credit accounts receivable in our journal entry. So we use that account called allowance for duffel accounts. When we actually find out who doesn't pay, then we debit this and credit accounts receivable. Also, it's just an estimate, so it's not going to be exact. We're not going to have exactly $400,000 worth of customers not paying. Now, recording the write-off of an uncollectible account. When all means of making a collection have been exhausted, that's where we're going to write it off. So you phoned you've sent people to their door, you've done everything you can, it's time to write it off. You can't find them in some cases, you know. So in this case we find out that Gurpal is broke. He is a schmuck. He's not paying us. So on August 31st, how much did Gurpal owe us? He owed us $200,000 if you see right here. So back to him, $200,000 we have to write off. So We've already written off, or we've already recorded the expense in our adjusting entry. Remember right here, on December 31st, we estimated that we would have a bad debt expense of $400,000. So we don't use bad debt expense because we are using the allowance method. So we're going to use debit allowance for doubtful accounts. And now we can credit accounts receivable because we know exactly who it is. So what in fact we've done is, when we credited allowance for doubtful accounts here for $400,000, let's make a T account. We had $400,000 here, and now we've written off $200,000. So we still expect $200,000 not to come in. We have a credit balance in this account. Again, do not use bad debt expense here. Do not debit bad debt expense. We've already done it at the year end when we did our estimate. So basically, this is a really key point I want you guys to remember. This is a good one. A write-off, so when you actually write off an account using the allowance method, only balance sheet accounts are affected. See that? Allowance for doubtful accounts, this is a contra asset, and this is an asset too. So when you do the write-off, Using the allowance method, only balance sheet accounts are affected. Really key to know. Good point. So, sometimes a company collects from a customer after they were written off. Again, we did this once before, let's do it again. Two entries are, are needed, so let's say Gurpal is no longer a schmuck, he comes up with his money and he wants to pay us back. We're going to reverse this journal entry here. We debited allowance, credited accounts receivable, 
Now we're going to put it back in place. We're going to debit accounts receivable, credit allowance, and then we're going to collect the cash from him. Debit cash, credit accounts receivable. And this is just to keep, keep good records in your journal of what's going on. Okay, so by now you should be able to explain the two methods for handling bad debts and explain why the direct write-off method is not the best method and journalize the write-off for bad debts using both the direct write-off method and the allowance method. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. In the next video we're going to go into detail on how to do those estimates for you.